Hey everybody, it's Taylor Bryant, Master Tech, and today we're going to be talking about the dreaded P0420 code, and we are going to be using this Passat right here to do some scan tool diagnostics, and also I'm going to kind of give you a lecture on how catalytic converters work and how to diagnose them, and a little bit on oxygen sensors and the way they work, and then we're going to try something to try to kind of circumvent this P0420 code so we don't have to put a catalytic converter on the vehicle. Stay tuned. Okay, so today we were gonna be using a Snap-on Zeus uh, scan tool suite. This uh, scan tool, I love it. It's uh, fairly expensive though. It's not something really for the do-it-yourselfer. It has a big screen and as an instructor, it, it helps me out a lot when I have a crowd of students around me kind of, um, I'm able to pull things up on the screen and so on and so forth, but I have this thing remotely attached to this uh, Passat uh, 1.8 turbo. So it's a single bank, it only has one bank. And uh, so we're gonna go in and we're gonna go to the engine management. And we're gonna check the codes. It only takes a second here to do that. And go to the I'm all I'm looking for right now is the code and it says do not replace components based on fault codes alone which is very very important here so we see a catalyst system bank one operation below threshold p0420 lower limit reached all right so um, that basically means that the the rear o2 sensor is sensing that the catalytic converter is not doing what it's supposed to okay so I'm gonna kind of go into what the catalytic converter does and what the oxygen sensors do uh, for you to better kind of understand what's actually going on. Uh, but for the most part, when you see this code, you need to check and make sure that the rear O2 sensors are good. Uh, but normally you, you do need a, uh, a catalytic converter. Okay, so it's very important to understand how a catalytic converter works and how oxygen sensors work. They work together to make this code happen. So what we're looking at is a PO420, just single bank right here, the catalytic converter. Um, on this end right here, you will have the exhaust stream, okay? So this is towards the engine. And over here will be after at least catalytic converter. So you have one oxygen sensor here that's bank one, sensor one, and the oxygen sensor that's behind the catalytic converter will be bank one, sensor two. It's very important not to get those two mixed up plug-wise on some vehicles, you can get the, the harnesses swapped up and it's gonna cause a lot of problems. So, how a catalytic converter works, it, if you think about it kind of like a filter that never clogs up, or not supposed to clog up, then you'll kind of understand how a catalytic converter works. So, the byproduct of combustion, turning gasoline into power, uh, chemical reaction, is going to give us a couple of things that we don't want in the atmosphere. So, you have uh, carbon monoxide, you have Oxides of nitrogen, or NOx, you have hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons is unburnt fuel, uh, so if you're burning a little rich or anything like that, you're gonna get some hydrocarbons in there as well. So what the catalytic converter does is under a certain temperature, uh, it will convert those things into uh, a different compound, a, a friendlier compound to the environment. So uh, you'll get CO2, you'll get water, and uh, it will convert those into those things. So uh, this O2 sensor right here is gonna get the full brunt of whatever we're putting out. And this is actually in closed loop. This is what's going to be giving you your air fuel mixture. So if you have a bad front O2 sensor, it's going to cause a lot of problems during, uh, after the car's warmed up. So this is going to go on a zero, to one volt scale, and your rear O2 sensor is going to do the same, okay? So zero to one volt, and a stoichiometric mixture, which means we're burning perfectly. There's absolutely no pollution or anything that's coming out of our car. The voltage is gonna put about 0.45, so that is perfect, okay? And this will be 0.45 as well. So this oxygen sensor is kind of like your taste tester, okay? It's going to test 
the exhaust and see if it's either rich or lean and it's going to report back to the computer whether it's rich or lean. So uh, as it reports back, the computer is going to change the way the injectors are being fired and that is going to change your air fuel mixture. So when you see the voltage pattern on this, one being rich and zero being lean, if you see a zero, obviously you know you have, and it's just all a dead zero, obviously you have a bad oxygen sensor, unplugged oxygen sensor, something like that. So you should never really see zero in this measurement. But you'll see this, this will actually go up and down. The voltage on this will go up and down. And we can look at this through a couple different ways. We can look at this through our scan tool, and we can look at this through our uh, multimeter or our lab scope if we have it plugged directly to the output wire on the uh, oxygen sensor. So on our front O2 sensor, we should be seeing this pattern go up and down because it's getting unfiltered, uncatalyst uh, exhaust. Now in the back, we should see a change between this pattern and the rear O2 sensor reporting pattern. That should be we should see a little wave. Now you could be burning rich, you could be burning lean, but really the pattern shouldn't really deviate much. So it should really be about even. And that's meaning that this catalytic converter is converting all of this nonsense over to a flat, um, a flat reading, okay? So when we see the catalytic converter go bad, you'll see the rear O2 sensor pattern will be like the front O2 sensor. It will be static all over the place, okay? So that means that the catalytic converter is not working. There's nothing in here that's converting these dangerous gases into these safe gases, okay? So this is how we, we diagnose this problem if we see the rear O2 sensor going crazy. Now, you could have other problems that are causing this code. If you have an ignition misfire, and the uh, catalytic converter is getting overloaded with, with fumes and things like that, uh, then you may have an issue. If you have bad oxygen sensors, in other words, if one of these are dead or one of these are reading really weak, this can also give a PO420 code. But that may also be accompanied by an oxygen sensor code as well. So if you have oxygen sensor codes with a PO420 code, or misfire codes with the PO420 code, you need to look a little deeper and not condemn that catalytic converter. These catalytic converters are very, very expensive. They're full of precious metals. You have platinum, palladium, rhodium, things like that. That's why they're very high theft uh, items. So you need to make sure that, that uh, your sensing, your sniffers right here, are working correctly before you condemn the catalytic converter. Okay, so I have the PID data pulled up here and the car is at operating temperature and you see this is the front O2 sensor here. Now this is a wideband oxygen sensor so it's going to run at a little bit different voltage scale than that 0 to 1 inch, uh, 0 to 1 volt scale. And this right here is just a regular band O2 sensor. And you see right here we're running right at about uh, 420 to 470 volts. And um, so at, a, at the first glance this looks like the catalytic converter is working. Uh, however, I think it may be throwing a code. It normally throws a code when I'm on the highway, so it may be just a weak catalytic converter. And when I'm driving down the road and uh, I'm generating more exhaust gases, it's going to then throw out that efficiency code because it can't convert all those gases. But this is actually a fairly good reading for a car idling. Um, you don't see much deviation up and down. That means the catalytic converter is taking care of all that, uh, you know, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and everything else that's going into the catalytic converter. So it uh, looks pretty good, but we obviously still have a problem. This code keeps coming back. So we're going to see the correct, really the correct thing to do would be to replace the catalytic converter. But uh, I want to try something first. So. Stick around, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Okay, this is a item that I ordered off of Amazon. This is a small, tiny catalytic converter, basically. So this will screw on the catalytic converter in between the catalytic converter and the rear O2 sensor. And I took this apart just to see kind of what's in it. 
and this is the substrate with the catalytic converter stuff printed on it so this screws in between the rear o2 sensor and it will act as a catalytic converter so the rear o2 sensor will pick up that it's on a catalytic converter so uh, I do give you guys a warning this may not be legal in all states uh, my state does not have emissions testing so uh, I'm not really worried about it but I just wanted to try this to see if they're about 10 bucks and they screw in between the rear O2 sensor and the catalytic converter and act as a catalytic converter so we're going to install this we're going to fire the scan tool back up and see if we get any different reading on that rear O2 sensor. Stick around. Okay, so I've got the rear O2 sensor out. On this car, you can really easily get this from the top. Here's your front O2 sensor right here. This is your catalytic converter, this uh, football-shaped item right here. And then back here is where we are going to, let's see if I can get the focus here, put this adapter here, this little piece of catalytic converter in there. I've actually already got it screwed in there. I just wanted to kind of show y'all how to install this. I've got the oxygen sensor just kind of resting there. It's still plugged in. Um, and so I just unscrewed it here. I used this wrench right here. It's a, a Crowfoot style oxygen sensor wrench. It's really nice. Um, let's see, it looks like uh, I'm not sure who manufactures that. I've had it for such a long time. It works really well to get down in there and get that sensor loose. And so we put the adapter in and now we are gonna go ahead and screw the oxygen sensor on top of the adapter right here. They do make uh, these in different angles as well. So if you don't have the space here to screw this in, they do have the 90 degree angled ones as well. Uh, some cars may have a little bit different area that you just put this in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in there, get everything tightened up, and take it for a test drive. Go ahead and get it up to operating temperature, and then we're gonna look on the scan tool and see if it's made any difference in our rear O2 sensor readout. Okay, so went and took the car on a test drive, went about seven miles or so, and we got it back. We're gonna see if we have any codes in the system after that sometimes these take a little bit longer to, to uh, set than this but uh, sometimes it may show a, a pending code or something like that so I'm seeing no codes are present and this will normally show me what if, if I've got any pending codes or anything like that so let's go over here to the data menu to the PID list we're going to pull back up the oxygen sensors and just kind of look and see what they're doing and takes just a second for this to warm up we're gonna go to oxygen sensor bank one and after cat so you see right now the uh, voltage is much lower I'm at 0.2 volts with this adapter on there and uh, so that's telling me the, the adapter is at least doing something I'm gonna change this uh, let's see if I can change this graph here to going to go zero to one volt right here we'll change that so let's see so right now we are right there at 0.2 volts so it's showing that it's running much leaner than it was so obviously this uh, this thing that we put in there has made a difference in what the rear O2 sensor is reading. So to me, that's a success. Uh, long term, I don't know how long this is gonna last, but it does look like it may make some difference in the way that the car picks up uh, if you have you know, any problems with your catalytic converter. So maybe something to look at. Again, the car really needs a catalytic converter. Those are much more expensive than this fix. If you're just trying to get the light off and off your dash, this may be a solution for you. But if you do have any type of local or state um, testing, emissions testing or something like that, this will not pass the test because they will uh, put the sensor in the tailpipe to, to see what you're, you're putting out. So if your catalytic converter is not working then, then of course this is not going to be a fix for you. 
but if you're just wanting the, the light off the dash or if you're straight piping your car or something like that then this may be a fix for you um, you know if you don't want to go through the trouble of getting a tune to tune it out well that does it for today's video um, I've got to get back to work I've got all these students behind me to teach but if you like what you heard uh, please uh, like the video and subscribe I can definitely use some more subscribers and if you have any comments or questions just leave them in the comments below and I'll get to them when I can talk to you soon